subscribe. Click on the bell. Like, comment, share. Is it possible for us to apply our knowledge on factors affecting the rate of reaction in our daily life? Watch this video clip. In video 2, the stain is easily removed when two cups of liquid detergent are used instead of one cup of liquid detergent as shown in video 1. As more detergent molecules are present in the water, it becomes easier to remove the stain. In short, it is possible to apply factors affecting the rate of reaction in our daily life. Which of the factors affecting the rate of reaction is applied in the situation shown. Do you know that chemical reactions happen all around us in our daily activities? Each of these reactions happens at a different rate. Think of factors that can affect the rate of reactions in these situations. What are the factors that affect each of the reaction? Drag and drop the correct answers into the empty boxes. Well done! From the previous lessons, we know that the factors affecting the rate of reaction include total surface area of the reactants, concentration of the reactants, temperature of the reactant mixture, external pressure of gases reaction mixture, presence of catalyst. How are these factors applied in our daily life? Click on each of the photos to find out. We use charcoal when we are barbecuing, grilling and roasting. These are the charcoal we normally buy from the store or supermarket. If you want to buy charcoal, which charcoal would you buy and why? Observe carefully what is being shown. Based on what is shown, answer these questions by keying in your answer. Why do we keep food in the refrigerator? What happens if the food is kept at room temperature? Observe carefully what is being shown. Based on what is shown, answer these questions by keying in your answer. Has your mother ever faced a situation where she had to cut down the normal cooking time because of unexpected visitors? Between these two pots, which one will be able to cut down the cooking time? Observe carefully what is being shown. Based on what is shown, answer these questions by keying in your answer. The Haber process combines nitrogen from the air with hydrogen into ammonia. Three factors affecting the rate of reaction are applied in the process. Observe carefully what is being shown. Based on what is shown, answer these questions by keying in your answer. 
How can we use our knowledge on rate of reaction to overcome problems that we encounter in our daily life? These are some examples. Click on each of the picture to find out more. Liquefied petroleum gas or LP gas such as the gas that we use for cooking can be disastrous if not properly handled. In a gas tank, LP gas is in two states of matter, liquid and vapour. The gas tanks are normally filled up to 80% of liquid, leaving about 20% space of vapour. This would provide space for expansion when temperature increases. Thus, there are some guidelines that we need to follow in storing LP gas safely. As more LP gas is used, the pressure decreases, leaving less gas in liquefied form and more vapour filling up the remaining space. What can you do to reduce the time taken to cook a kilogram of meat? Suggest any three methods based on your knowledge on the factors affecting the rate of reaction to reduce the time taken. We can cut the meat into smaller pieces. This will increase the surface of the meat exposed to cooking. We can use biological catalysts known as enzymes to soften the meat before cooking. We can increase the pressure and temperature used to cook the meat by using a pressure cooker. Let us look at how we can apply our knowledge on factors affecting the rate of reaction in our everyday activities. Click on each of these boxes. Do you know how bread is made? Here's a recipe for making bread. Mix the flour, sugar and salt in a mixing bowl. Add the margarine and rub into the flour. Add the dried yeast to the flour mixture and stir well. Add warm water into the flour mixture and stir using a wooden spoon thoroughly. When the dough gets tough, use your hands until the dough no longer sticks on the sides of the bowl. Place it on a surface that has been poured with flour. Knead the dough until it becomes smooth and elastic. Put the dough into a mixing bowl and cover it with a clean cloth and place in a warm area. Set the oven to 230 centigrade. When the size of the dough has doubled, which would normally take about 30 minutes, place it on a greased baking tray. Bake the dough for about 25 minutes. The bread should look golden brown. Place it on a wire rack to cool. The bread that we have just made has a spongy and soft textured with a thin crust. It is normally sold ready sliced in packages. Have you ever heard of French loaf? French loaf is a type of bread that has a thick hard crust and often has large bubbles of air inside. It is often sold totally unwrapped to keep the crust crispy. Based on our knowledge on how to make bread, Modify the given recipe to make your own flavoured French loaf. In a group of four, produce the recipe. Present the recipe to the class and get their feedback on whether the recipe would work or not. Then, try the recipe out. Ripening is one of the processes in fruits that can cause them to be more suitable to eat, which in general makes it sweeter, less acidic, less green, and softer as they ripen. Naturally, ripening of fruits is influenced by a plant hormone. This plant hormone stimulates the ripening process by increasing certain enzymes in fruits. In agricultural industry, ripening of fruits is controlled for the purpose of exporting them. Let's take bananas as an example. Normally, 
bananas take about two weeks to be fully ripen. How can we shorten the ripening process? Wood is a commonly used building material. However, when it is in contact with the ground or moisture for a period of time, it will be damaged by insects, moisture and decay fungi. In the industry, wood is chemically treated to increase durability and resistance from being destroyed by insects or fungus. Among the common methods of treating wood are brushing or spraying, dipping, soaking or steeping. However, these methods do not ensure deep and uniform penetration of the preservative chemicals into the wood. Based on our knowledge of factors affecting the rate of reaction, what factor can be applied to make the preservative chemicals penetrate the wood deeper, more uniform and faster? In the industry, pressure treatment is used to force the preservative chemicals to penetrate the wood deeper, more uniform and faster. In pressure treatment, wood is placed inside a closed cylinder where vacuum and pressure are then applied to force the preservatives into the wood. In this lesson, we have learned that factors affecting the rate of reaction can be applied in daily life and the industrial processes. For example, the burning of charcoal is affected by the size of the charcoal. The smaller the size of charcoal, the bigger the total surface area exposed for reaction. Food that is stored at room temperature gets decayed faster compared to food stored in the refrigerator. The higher the temperature, the higher is the rate of reaction. Pressure is the factor affecting the pressure cooker to speed up the cooking process. The higher the pressure, the higher is the rate of reaction. High concentrated detergents help to remove stains faster than less concentrated detergents. The higher the concentration, the higher is the rate of reaction. In the manufacturing process, catalyst is used to speed up the production. The presence of catalyst provides an alternative path that makes a reaction occur faster. Other factors that are also used in the industry to speed up the reaction are temperature and pressure. We have learned that by applying the knowledge of the factors affecting the rate of reaction, we can manage many chemical reactions that happen in our daily activities. For example, in baking bread, different temperature used can produce different types of bread. Fruits can be ripened in a shorter time by using ethane gas as a catalyst. Woods can be treated more effectively by applying pressure to force the preservative chemicals into the wood. By applying the knowledge of the factors affecting the rate of reaction, we can also predict the consequences of a particular reaction and make relevant decisions using a structured problem-solving approach. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like the video. And don't forget to subscribe.